In this video, I'm going to walk you through yet another CFA level one exam style question, this time on the topic of non-controlling or minority interest. This is, I could say, part three of a series of videos which started with the intuition behind Goodwill. Then we did a video, or I recorded a video on gains on a bargain purchase. And this is the third installment of this series, which focuses on the same scenario as before, but this time tackling it from another angle. The examiner expects you at the level one exam to understand the concept of non-controlling or minority interest. You won't have to calculate the value of this item, which appears in the balance sheet. However, you're supposed to appreciate what it stands for, what it means, and how to treat it as an analyst. Now, as I did with Goodwill, and gains on a bargain purchase, I'm going to force you to perform a calculation in relation to this, simply because I believe that calculating something on your own will give you a better, better understanding of what it means and how to deal with it. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. We've got the same scenario as in the previous videos. We've got Excelsior Hospitality acquiring Manor House and we've got Manor House's balance sheet. We've got some info on um, adjustments that need to be made so as to arrive at the fair values or market values of Manor House's uh, various assets. If this is the first time you're seeing this scenario, please go back to the previous two videos, Intuition Behind Goodwill and Gains on a Bargain Purchase, because I extensively discussed the contents of this scenario over there and the relevant adjustment, adjustments which need to be made. If you watched the previous two videos, let's keep reading. This time around, the difference is once again in the final paragraph over here, assuming Excelsior, that's the acquirer, pays 12 million to buy or to acquire just 75% of the share capital of Manor House and Resort and Spa, what is the property, plant and equipment and non-controlling interests reported on the consolidated balance sheet of the Excelsior Hospitality Group as a result of the acquisition? And we've got three options or three combinations for property, plant and equipment and non-controlling interests. Okay. Without writing anything here, I'm going to head straight over to the balance sheet and uh, financial statements template because I think this question is best solved whilst bringing various items onto the financial statements. So let's head over to the template. Okay, the thing that's really, really different about the scenario now is that we are acquiring not 100% of the share capital, as was the case before, but just 75%. So let me write that down. We will not be the sole owners of the subsidiary. There is somebody else who owns 25%. However, from the point of view of consolidating, we still consider the purchased business to be our subsidiary, seeing as we exercise control over it and control um, in financial reporting is what makes you consolidate another company into your group financial statements. It may seem that when we, or it may seem logical that if we are now to bring the assets and liabilities of the acquired business into our balance sheet, we should be doing this in some, or using some kind of proportion. You know, previously when we owned 100% uh, of the share capital, it was quite obvious that we should be adding everything that the other company has and consolidating it with our own group assets. One of the biggest mistakes people make in this exam when it comes to questions or relating to consolidations is that they think that owing, owning 75% of the share capital means you should be consolidating 75% of the assets, liabilities, income and expenses of the subsidiary. That's absolutely not the case. When we consolidate, we consolidate in full. So irrespective of this 75% share ownership, when I bring my freshly acquired subsidiaries assets into the asset side of my consolidated balance sheet, starting with property, plant and equipment, I'm going to do this in full. So property, plant and equipment 
was carried at 12 million in this in the target company's balance sheet but we know its true fair value was worth uh, was slightly higher higher by 2 million so just like before i'm going to say well the subsidiary brings in property plant and equipment worth 14 million the same is going to apply to that brand and logo which i believe was valued at two and a half million once again, same story with the receivables. Those were valued at four and also carried in the balance sheet at four. And then we've got cash. The subsidiary was bringing its own cash worth 13, sorry, not 13, but three. And also on the other side of the balance sheet, of obviously over here within liabilities, we need to record the fact that our freshly acquired subsidiary is bringing its liabilities. So seven and a half million in total. Um, and once again, I'm no not doing any proportional scaling to account for the fact that we've only got 75% share ownership. So full consolidation because we control the company and control is a kind of zero one either you have it or you don't type of concept there isn't such a thing as 75 percent control it's either there or it isn't now i want to check whether possibly in this scenario we're going to have to account for goodwill and you know what goodwill is or you should know from the um, previous two videos in this series devoted to consolidation topics let's just quickly check goodwill and i don't know if we've got it let's just write it down with a question mark this was the excess of the purchase price what's the purchase price in this question well the purchase price is 12 12 million over our interest and this time it's going to be 75 percent in the fair value of the net assets acquired now the fair value of the net assets acquired is exactly the same as before and it's basically the result of taking these assets 14 plus 4 plus 3 which i know now is 21 <laughs> seeing as I performed that computation in the previous videos, 21 plus 2.5 is 23.5 minus 7.5 when it comes to the liabilities, gives us a uh, fair value of the net assets of 16. And obviously 75% or three quarters of 16 is going to be 12. Now, excess of the purchase price, 12 over 12, no excess there is no surplus there is no deficit it's just simply equal to zero so goodwill in this case doesn't exist and there is no also uh, gain on a bargain purchase which would have been the situation where purchase price was lower than the acquirer's interest in the fair value of the net assets acquired okay so we don't have to worry about this let's just focus on these numbers how much did we pay well we know we paid 12 so this is how much cash flows out from the group uh, or from the holding company in order to purchase the subsidiary let's try to now see if this balance sheet balances on the left hand side we've got these items over here equal to 23 and a half minus 12 well 23 and a half minus 12 is going to give a total asset growth of 11 and a half on the other side of the balance sheet i so far have a growth in liabilities of just seven and a half and it would obviously be very very much ideal to have the two sides um uh, equal however that's not the case yet what am i missing well i still need an additional item worth four in order to bring this side of the balance sheet to the required total which i got from my assets growth where does this fit in well we're going to need 
a new additional item and it's called non-controlling interest, sometimes known as minority interest, but it's more properly called non-controlling interest. It's going to be a part of our equity. So let me write non-controlling interest and it's, a, it's going to equal exactly the amount we need to balance the two sides of the balance sheet. So in this case, I guess it should equal four. And now we've got growth of four here. We've got growth of seven and a half here. Four and seven and a half does indeed give us 11 and a half in total. So that's fine. But what does this represent? It's not just a residual figure that we need to balance, uh, to balance the balance sheet. There is meaning behind it. When we purchase a company, irrespective of our own share ownership, in this case it was 75, we still stuff our balance sheet with the assets and liabilities of the acquired business as if we were a 100% owner. And that's due to the fact that we control this business and control is not measured proportionally. It either exists or it doesn't. So 100% or nothing. The total value that we introduced here is 23.5 on the left-hand side, 7.5 on the right-hand side, so a net value of 16. And in a way, we're pretending to be the 100% owner because we control, but we're really not. If you have introduced into your balance sheet items with a total positive value of net 16, but you're not the 100% owner of all of this, this is the place where you, in a way, own up to the fact that there are others who also have a share or interest in these assets minus liabilities. So this four is nothing else but taking 25%, that is 100% minus what we own, of the share or capital of this business that has been acquired and multiplying it by the net value of the assets. So fair value of net assets which have been acquired. There's somebody else behind these assets, and I'm sorry I'm writing this on the income statement, but I don't really have any, any more space left. There's somebody else, somebody who is not a controlling shareholder, but they still are there. Because I introduced everything at 100%, this is the place to show that there's somebody else who also has an, a stake or an ownership in these net assets, even though they can't exercise control. Now, no matter if I own 75%, 60%, 55% or 80%, as long as I'm not a 100% shareholder, I'm still going to introduce the net assets in my consolidated balance sheet in full. But then this item, this compensating item, will either be bigger or smaller depending on what proportion of these net assets those minority or non-controlling non shareholders actually hold. Okay, let's go back to the question and provide the correct answer. Okay, the question's in front of us and we actually know what the solution should be. We know that all items coming from the subsidiary, sorry, should be consolidated in our group balance sheet in full, even if we are not the 100% owner of that subsidiary. We consolidate in full. So definitely, property, plant and equipment should be carried at its full value, and that is whatever we had originally in the balance sheet of the target company adjusted to fair value, which gives 14. That points to answer B, doesn't it? Now, the non-controlling interest, which we calculated, was equal to 4. And that, once again, confirms that the correct answer ought to be B. Remember, non-controlling interest is the share of the net assets of the subsidiary, which we introduced to the balance sheet, into the consolidated balance sheet, but the share belonging to the other shareholders, not us, we are the controlling shareholder, 
So there must be some non-controlling interests as well, which will always happen if always happen if we haven't acquired 100% of the share capital.